Hello and welcome to this episode of The Unconventional Ufologist. Way back in 1987 I got a copy of Timothy Good's Above Top Secret, a book that I strongly recommend to those new to the subject of UFOs, and yes, I still can't bring myself to say UAPs. Inside was an interesting story, one of which I was certain I'd read a few years before. So I went through my books and files and eventually found it. It was an article written by Omar Fowler, chairman of the Surrey Investigation Group on Aerial Phenomena, SIGAP, that appeared in Volume 29, Issue 2 of 1983's Flying Saucer Review, under the title A Landing and Close Encounter Near Aldershot. Timothy Good went one step further with Abduction at Aldershot, but as ever, I try to be different. I call it The Strange Case of Alfred Burtu. Here follows the bare bones of the encounter. The case is a remarkable one, with a UFO that occurred on August the 12th, 1983, near Aldershot, Hampshire, in England. The witness, Mr Alfred Burtu, a seasoned outdoorsman and former Canadian resident, provided a first-hand account of his experience, which he claimed was motivated by curiosity rather than fear. On the night of the incident, Mr Burtu was fishing on the Basingstoke Canal Bank. He described the weather as ideal for fishing, with a clear sky and a young moon. He was setting up his gear when he noticed a bright light approaching from the south. The light descended slowly, settling down near the railway bridge. Mr Burtu, initially believed in it to be an aircraft, was surprised by its low altitude and the absence of any engine noise. He watched as the light extinguished, revealing a craft resting on the towpath. Two figures, approximately four feet tall, emerged from the craft and approached Mr Burtu. They were clad in pale green overalls with visors covering their faces, making their features indistinguishable. The witness described them as being silent and devoid of any visible features like buttons, zips or belts. He also noted that his dog, initially growling at the figures, calmed down when he commanded it to do so. One of the figures gestured for Mr Burtu to follow them. He described the craft as having a hexagonal shape with steps leading up to a corridor. The interior was dimly lit with a central column rising from the floor. A voice, speaking in broken English, asked him his age. Mr Burtu replied, 78 on my next birthday. The voice then instructed him to stand under an amber light, and after a brief pause he was told, You can go, you are too old and infirm for our purpose. Mr Burtu described the interior of the craft as being black, with a ceiling approximately 5 feet high. He noted the presence of a Z-shaped handle on the central column and two figures standing on either side of it, seemingly ready to operate some kind of mechanism. He also observed that the floor felt like it was covered in cloth, as his footsteps made no sound. The craft's exterior, he says, was like polished aluminium with no visible joints, welds or nuts or bolts. After being dismissed, Mr Burtu exited the craft and watched it as it lifted off to a height of approximately 300 feet. He then followed its trajectory as it flew southwest, passing over Tongham and the Hog's Back, before disappearing from view. A look at his watch would tell him that an hour had gone by. According to Burtu, he then settled down to continue what he'd ventured out to the canal bank to do, to relax and do some fishing. And then, around 10am, he was approached by two mounted MOD policemen who made small talk with him. And when he mentioned the strange lights and glowing craft, one of them replied, Yeah, I suspect you did see that UFO. I expect they were checking out on our military installations. Now Mr Burtu's account is significant for several reasons. The witness, Mr Burtu's background as a seasoned outdoorsman and his calm demeanour during the encounter lend credibility to his story. The craft, and the description of it, with its central column in hexagonal shape, echoes features reported in other UFO sightings. The absence of visible joints or fasteners suggest advanced technology. The beings, or the figure's appearance and behaviour, particularly their silent demeanour and the use of broken English, are consistent with other reported alien encounters. The purpose, or the beings' dismissal of Mr Burtu due to his age, suggests a specific purpose for their visit and raises questions about their capabilities and intentions. Timothy Good had spent a lot of time after the event with Mr Burtu, and although there were minor inconsistencies in his story, 
Good firmly believe that Mr Bertu's incident did indeed take place. Before Mr Bertu's death in 1986, rumours spread that he had made the whole thing up, yet after his passing, Mrs Bertu said that it wasn't a made up story. The event actually happened and that when he returned home after the incident, he had the look of a man who had seen a miracle happen. As ever, I have presented this case in a way that you can look yourself for other details and reference two sources to read the case in depth so as to make your own mind up. This has been another episode of The Unconventional Ufologist. Thanks for joining me. My name's Steve and hope to see you next time. And remember, keep watching the skies. Flight